<laughs> Is everybody all right over there? Praise the Lord. Let me hear it for the right side. <laughs> Amen. It's good to be here as we baptize today. Had the opportunity to do this once already at the other campus. We baptized three people. We baptized in one today as we share this sacrament of the church. So praise the Lord. Except for that, one more. This is Henry. You know, last week they came up and shared that he wanted to be baptized. So we're glad that Henry's here. Henry, have you confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Now that's most words you're going to get out of Henry all day. <laughs> but he is committed to the Lord. He wants to live his life for Jesus. And that's so important. Amen? Amen. So if we come to these waters, Henry, this is just a picture of what Christ has done for us when he was buried in death for us and risen from the dead. So these waters symbolize the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus. What a lot of people don't know is just how important this is, Henry. This is, your, this is a genuine public testimony of your faith in Jesus Christ, just you doing this so that you don't have to say so many words, because this is the message today. We'll be sharing the Lord's Supper. That message, that's the message today, amen? So I baptize you today, Henry, for the honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I baptize you, my brother Henry, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all give Henry a praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lenny, why not you come? That's why we're here. That's why, as believers, we are called to disciple and go out and spread the word. And it's my honor this morning to welcome everybody here. And I love being able to do that. And here at, at Believers Fellowship, if you're here for the very first time, we want you to know that it is not an accident that you are here. We have been praying for you to be here on this day for such a time as this. And you'll notice that in your worship guide that you received, there is a gray a card in there on the back sheet of paper. And we would just ask that you would fill that out. Let us know who you are. And at the end of the service, our pastor, some of our uh, lift group leaders, our lay leaders will be out there. We want to meet you. We want to encourage you and welcome you to the body. Our pastor will have a gift for you. And so we want you to be there and be a part of what Believers is doing. But you see, there's more. Because as a first-time guest, we want to ask you to stay seated. And those of us that are regular attenders and members at Believers Fellowship, we want to welcome you in a very special way. So regular attenders and members, get up out of your seats, say hello. appropriate song to sing before the Lord's Supper when you think about it because of everything the Lord's Supper represents. Uh, that's why the Lord tells us to remember. Glad that you're here today. We had a lot of crazy storms coming through the area last night and you'll see all the limbs and branches and twigs down everywhere. It's nice we got some power. We have a lot of folks in the community without power today. Don't ever let that stop me come to church. I can tell of you that didn't have power. I'm glad you're here anyway. <laughs> Not really, all right. So I, it's, it's, <laughs> checking my hair again. On the way to work Monday morning, coming in, coming out of Tom Ball about halfway to the church, there was a song on the radio, probably some of you listen to KSBJ have heard probably many times, and I won't hurt you by trying to sing the melody, but there's a line and a lyric in there. It says, we're all just one phone call away from our knees. One phone call from our knees. And uh, that is so true. Uh, I talked to Kathy. I said, we're listening to that. I said, you know, if you ever really listen to words of this song? And so we're listening to it. When it got over. I said, you know, that is so true. How, how often, you know, has that phone call come in the night or in the day even? And it's kind of that crisis moment in time. Well, about three or four hours later, we got that phone call. And it was uh, from my brother who lives in West Texas, Bill, his, from his wife, saying that he suffered a massive heart attack, been in an accident. Uh, they have gotten him to the hospital, and they spent 40 minutes, you know, in resuscitation with him to get his heart beating steadily. And 
we have him on a vent tube and sedation, following all the procedures for these kind of events from icing him down and, and all those things. Many of you know that you received the prayer request of the prayer line and have been praying for him. And I appreciate his name is his, his name is Bill. I appreciate your prayers for him and your continued prayers for him. Uh, things are kind of every day, kind of first couple of days were real positive, but everything since then has been negative reports. We know who's on the throne. Um, this service today, even though it's shorter than most, was, it's, I'm kind of glad it is shorter than most. I'll be heading out right back after the service, heading back out to West Texas to, to be with the family some more. But uh, we appreciate your prayers, and it means so much to us. We were sitting around in the ICU room. How many of y'all been in the ICU rooms before? You know what I'm talking about. Especially when it looks things are very in much demise and negative report. Everybody began to share their stories. You know, it works in the IC room and families in the other room and you're reminiscing and talking about them, praying. Prayed a lot, cried a lot, reminisced a lot. And uh, it, it was kind of, you know, it's kind of funny to watch the people in the context that are not funny, but humorous, you understand the context. It, while somebody else was telling a story about him, which I did threaten him if he didn't come out of this, I, when he does come out of this, uh, if he doesn't do it immediately, I was going to blackmail him with all the stories I've gotten on him now. But I had to say, but I remember, and they would tell the story, and then somebody else would say, but I, you remember when? And somebody would say, I know one you don't know. And that's why I said, we don't want to know. <laughs> Some of those are left best untold. But it was, it was interesting to go around the room. You get different facets of the people you know and you love and uh, the, the influences that maybe you didn't know about of, of people. But in the context of staying there watching all this, knowing I, I had my Bible and my iPad out, you know, even though I wasn't here, I was still working, and uh, getting ready for Sunday and for, for the Lord's Supper. But the, that theme of the Lord's Supper is always those two words. What are they? Remember me. What is it? Remember me. Remember me. And just as we were sitting around remembering all these events and all these aspects and all these different little ins and outs of a brother's life, well, how true this is often forgotten in this context. That when we sit down to remember the Lord, we ought to remember the Lord. It ought to be going back to those things in our mind. I remember when God did this for me. I remember when God answered that prayer in the middle of the night. I remember when God delivered. I remember when God saved. I remembered. And just that point where you're, just, you're remembering all that the Lord has meant to you as an individual person. Yes, we remember him in, in, the, in the bigger picture. We remember that he was born of a virgin. A supernatural birth. It had to be a supernatural birth or else he would have been a tainted human being by a sin nature. But he had no sin nature. He had a human nature, but yet without sin. The Bible said he lived his whole way, life that way. So we remember that. We want to remember that supernatural introduction of Jesus on the planet Earth as a man, but yet still God. And we want to remember his life. I mean, even at 12, he's up in the temple, you know, asking questions of the rabbis, probably, you know, those interrogative questions, you know, like, what does you think that means? Because he knew what it meant. You know, discussing theology with the lead rabbis and teachers of the day. And remember how he lived that sinless and perfect, holy life, tempted in the wilderness and passed every test because he was pure, because he was holy, because he is who he said he was and who he says he is. And we need to remember that. We need to remember every aspect of that. And we re remember that he went to the cross, suffered the humiliation, the embarrassment, the, the, the interrogations, uh, the, the mock trials and ridiculous you know, verdicts that were read. And from there, how he was beaten, mauled literally, mutilated, whip laid to his back, crown upon, of thorns upon his head, nails in his hands and his feet, spear in his side. We need to remember that. We need to have that picture clear in our heart and our mind. When we come to this, those, that's the big thing. We come to remember this. We need to remember Jesus just hours before those, those events of his arrest, sitting with his disciples in a room like this and taking those two elements off the Seder, off the Passover meal, the cup and the bread, and literally telling them, this is getting ready to happen to me. You need to, you need to follow, you need to believe. The eating of the of the bread, the eat, drinking of the wine, it's just symbolic of our faith. That, yeah, we accept this. We receive this. This is, this is how we're going to live now. This is, this is our new life. We need to remember that. We need to remember also, though, that he was laid in a tomb for three days and he rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. 
We need to remember that he is the king of kings. And we need to certainly remember he's the Lord of life and death. We need to remember the words of the Lord Jesus when he said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. We need to take time to remember that today. And we need to remember that he's coming again. And he's coming in glory and he's coming in power. And he's coming to take us away. Where for a period of seven years will we be with him and celebrating a great deal of the marriage feast of the Lamb. We need to remember that. And you remember that time when he'll come back and reign a thousand years on the earth as the Lord of all lords and the king of all kings. And every president and every king will come and bow down and pay homage to the, at the feet of Jesus. Yes. We need to remember that. And we need to remember that there's going to come a day when hell will be opened and the lost will be cast into it forever and eternity. eternity and it will be locked up and put away. And we will be rejoicing throughout eternity with God our, our king in absolute glory and wonder. We need to remember that. Jesus said, as often as you do this, remember me. Remember me. And just as much as we would sit in an ICU waiting room and reminiscing over days gone by over with a loved one, we need to do some reminiscing of days gone by with the Lord Jesus. We need to remember, when was it that you came to that crisis moment in your life and gave your heart and your life to Jesus? We baptized a couple of people this morning who couldn't, who, who, who couldn't remember you know, a moment in time when they'd honestly given Jesus Christ their heart and their life. It's kind of like we've been in church and we've been religious and we turned around and we, we made more of a commitment of our life to be a better person and be moral and decent, but they were standing there before the congregation to say, you know, we have now given our life to Jesus Christ and we know what we've done and we want to make this testimony today of baptism. Can you remember a time when Christ came to your life? I ask people all the time, do you know you're saved? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think. That's like ask, asking me, do you know you're married? Oh, I think. <laughs> How many of you married? How many just think you're married? You know you're married. Because <laughs> you have to keep remembering. For better or for worse, for better or for worse, for better or for worse. <laughs> Till death do his part. That may be sooner than what he thinks. Or she thinks. You need to remember what the Lord's done for you. When, when was it? Just go there in your mind just for a moment. Just take, just, you're dismissed mentally, all right? Some of you are dismissed already, but just take a moment and, and, and go back in time. When was that? Might have been as a child, might have been as an adult, teenager for some of you. Might have been at a rally, might have been in a football game. I mean, I've seen people saved in some of the craziest places. I was in an apartment complex. I remember it. I remember the change that it brought in my life. I remember walking out of that place knowing that the world had just moved on my behalf. Yes. You know, that God had done something for me that was so significant that I just, I sensed it in my very being that I was different. That ever happened? Can you remember that? If you can't, then you need to settle that issue today. Give your life to Jesus Christ. There's nothing in the world like it. Amen? Remember what he's done since then. How many prayers has he answered on your behalf? How many times has he just answered and you didn't even pray? How many times has God moved before you and taken down the enemy? Some we probably will never even see till we stand before him one day and we say, I didn't know that was out there and you protected me. You took care of me, you know. It's like that, that, the poem that talks about how the, the, the footprints in the sand, y'all have heard that, you know, the two sets, this is where we walk together and well, how come there's only one set of prints? Did you leave me there? Well, no, I, that's where I carried you. We'll see those times. And I saw a revision of that comic strip this week uh, in, in comic strip form. They said, well, what about those straight squiggly lines? Said, That's where I dragged you yelling. <laughs> yelling and screaming all the way. <laughs> I've had some moments like that too. We need to remember what God has done for us. We need to remember how he's blessed you in family and friends and relationships and a great church. Amen. We, we need to remember, remember Jesus. So when we come to this meal today, as the deacons are coming, and some of the elders and whoever's helping today, you're coming, as they come, I want you just to kind of get your mind in a different place. Because literally the word in that Greek language to remember, is we bring full attention and focus upon, upon what? Let's bring it upon Jesus. Get everything else in your mind, all the traffic, all the junk, all the garbage going through. I got a lot of stuff I'm facing, you got a lot of stuff you're facing, let's take a moment to just set that off to the side, and let's remember Christ. Let's remember the Lord Jesus. Let's remember his love and his tender mercies. Let's remember that no matter where we are right now, we have seen more than enough times that he's going to get us through it. 
He's going to hold our hands and walk us through it. Let's remember Christ today. Paul the Apostle talked to the Corinthian church as he was talking to them about the Lord's Supper. And he says, you know, the night that the Lord was betrayed, he took bread. We're going to take this bread ourselves this morning and we're going to pass it out amongst you. And as, as we pass it out this morning, then I would ask that as you take the piece of bread. Do we need to take those with us or not? Okay. We need to take this bread and as they pass it amongst you, just hold on to it. And as you hold on, I want you just to remember all the Lord's done for you. Would you pass the bread out? As they pass it out, we don't share a closed communion, folks. You, if you love Jesus, you can participate in this communion service with us. You never change. You are the God you see. When I'm afraid, you come and still my beating heart. You stay the same when hope is just a taste of fun. You take my pain and you lead me to the cross. What love is this that you gave your love for me? So Paul wrote the church at Corinth about the blood and the bread. He says we should take this in a worthy manner. English literature translates like worthily. Now for the English students in the room, worthily is an adverb. It's not an adjective. It doesn't describe you because most of us and our description of ourselves don't include the terminology worthy. <laughs> if we're humble, amen. There's no way we're worthy. The only worthy one is Jesus. So I've seen some people say, well, I'll never be worthy so I don't take the Lord's Supper. It's not describing you, it's talking about the manner in which you take it. What kind of manner is that? That our hearts ought to be right. Jesus died to take away our sins and we ought not be still carrying them around. We ought to be laying them down at the cross, moving forward with Christ. So before we take this, just to make sure that we're honoring the admonition of Scripture, let's just bow our heads. If there's anything in your heart that would hinder you from taking this worthily in a way that honor Christ, maybe there's some area in your life that's not right, maybe some relationship that's not right, maybe there's some sin you've been holding on to, 
Maybe there's been some unforgiveness in your heart. Let's honor the Lord by getting it right. This meal represents the cross. The cross is our forgiveness. Just between you and the Lord. Maybe there's some say, Lord, forgive me of this. I've sinned against you here. It's not your will that I should be in this. Forgive me. Cleanse my heart today. Father, may we have broken hearts as we take this broken bread. Jesus, we remember you. And you took on the form, the body of humanity and became one of us so that you could pay the price for all of us. We remember you. We choose to honor you today. Wash us and cleanse us and forgive us we lay these things before you we take up this bread and say Jesus we remember you we give you thanks today so the blood is blessed by God's grace and mercy you take and eat today Scripture says in the same way. What does that mean? I believe it means with the same humility, knowing exactly what he was talking about, knowing exactly where he was headed, knowing exactly what it would cost him. In the same way, he took the cup. See, these gentlemen pass this out. You take the cup and just concentrate. Remember, focus on the Lord Jesus. In this moment of time, just put everything else continually aside. Say, Jesus, 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 I remember you. Good time to remember and thank the Lord for your salvation, for his forgiveness, restoration.
is yours Forever my Lord Forever my heart Forever my life is yours It's yours Again, the scripture records, in like manner, Jesus took the cup. He said, this cup is my blood, the cup of the new covenant. The new covenant said that we can be forgiven by one man's sacrifice. A new covenant which closed the doors and ripped the curtains literally to the Holy of Holies, giving us an entrance to have a relationship with God. A new covenant that allowed God himself to literally move into our lives because Jesus would now forgive us and these vessels could be cleansed and made fresh and new. God could literally inhabit humanity. A new covenant of mercy, a new covenant of grace, a new covenant, an everlasting, an eternal covenant. Thank God for the precious blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'd ask you just to bow your heads and just take a moment to thank the Lord and remember the Lord as we take this cup together. Just tell the Lord you love him. Whatever you want to do in worship right there where you are, just take a moment between you and the Lord to tell him you remember. You remember the cost. You remember the price. I remember Lord Jesus. I remember we remember what you did for us. And we remember and we know that it was not an easy task. It required everything. All that you were. We don't look lightly upon it. We thank you today. We choose to honor you for your goodness to us and your grace to us. We remember you in Jesus' name. We thank you. Did you drink? You have a song we stand and sing? What can wash away my sin? Something like that. Let's praise the Lord. Power in the blood. Do that again. Let's celebrate. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, oh, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There's power.
You may be seated, or at least try to be seated. Praise the Lord. So glad you came to church today. Yes. Praise God. A couple of things I want to remind you of if you are a guest of ours today. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you and welcome and glad that you were a part of our worship service today. It's always, it's always an exciting day and we can do both the sacraments of the New Testament together and baptism of the Lord's Supper. If you haven't been baptized and maybe today this seeing baptism, you haven't stirred that up in your heart and mind. Listen, there's no reason for you to keep putting this off. We do this any Sunday and every Sunday. You just need to let us know. You want to call the church office. Brother Glenn, wave your hand. He's sitting up here. He's the coordinator for all the baptism events. You can capture him after service. Say, listen, I, I, I need to quit putting this off. I, I've confessed Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but I have not yet followed him in scriptural baptism. Immersion, following what the Lord not only set the example for us to do, he did it, but I need to do it as well. Amen. So what a way you can give testimony to the Lord Jesus and his grace for you. And also the Lord's Supper. What an honor it is to receive this with you today in the presence of the Lord Jesus. If you are a guest, bring that connection card. I'll be back by the Welcome Center right after the service is over. Uh, don't tarry. Come straight on back when we're dismissed. I'd love to meet you because I'm going to be heading out soon for West Texas again. So uh, come on back. Meet me. If not, there'll be somebody still hanging around for you. Get, if, if one of these, we have some talkers, all right? <laughs> We got the people with the gift of fellowship. If they hold you up, all right, they'll get you back there first, all right? Praise the Lord. We are glad you're here, part of worship. Just a few closing words. Don, would you come?